God Paradise and the Central Universe. The Central Universe, as the name implies, and as the Urantia book asserts, is at the center of the entire created universe. One thing is certain, the only information we have about the Central Universe, since we can't see it, is that which the authors of the Urantia book have provided us. Therefore we have nothing with which to compare this picture they have painted for us. We have to take their description on faith. Paradise. Since paradise is the origin of all material reality, I think it's appropriate to begin our journey with paradise as our starting point. One thing that sets paradise apart physically from the rest of the master universe is that paradise is not in time and space, and in fact is the origin of time and space. We are informed that while there is no time on paradise, there is a sequence of events. There are many intriguing questions we could ask about this, such as, if we went to paradise on a Thursday and participated in a long sequence of events, would it be the same day when we emerged into time and space? We'll probably just have to wait and see. The authors tell us that paradise is gigantic and has three areas of significance, upper paradise, peripheral paradise, and nether paradise. The Father is present at the center of Upper Paradise and is enshrouded by the Eternal Son, who is in turn enshrouded by the Infinite Spirit. Many liberal theologians have rejected the idea of God as a personal being with a fixed location. Possibly this is their reaction to the anthropomorphic bearded old man in the sky idea. Instead they picture God as a universal presence, but not as a personal being. They cannot conceive that God may have a primary manifestation and location as a person, yet be universally present everywhere through various agencies such as the personality circuit. Their imaginations are too small. Peripheral paradise contains the landing fields for transport angels and many other facilities. Nether paradise is a realm where energy is circuited to and eventually returns from the time-space creations. The authors tell us that space force is alternately outgoing for a billion years and incoming for the next billion years, synchronized with the cycles of space respiration. The authors also inform us that all energy sent out eventually returns after many ages and adventures in the time-space universe. So it appears that God was the first recycler. Just at the edges of paradise, pervaded space, our time-space universe, and unpervaded space ends. The current slide shows how these areas terminate at paradise and what a cross-section of, of paradise and these zones might look like. The unpervaded space seems to be a reservoir involved with a phenomenon of space respiration. We are informed that pervaded space expands and contracts on a two billion year cycle. The current slide shows one billion years or one half of this cycle. This phenomenon is called space respiration. Unpervaded space contracts when pervaded space expands and expands when pervaded space contracts, as shown in the current figure. Evidently, this means that space is not only real, it is non-compressible. When pervaded space contracts, the space reservoirs take up the space that is squeezed out. The authors do not give a reason for space respiration. The three circuits of divine spheres. Moving out from paradise into the time-space realm, we next encounter the three circuits of the Father, Son, and Spirit, seven spheres each. These are shown in the current slide and are well described in paper 13. Havona. Continuing our movement away from paradise, we next encounter the seven circuits of the worlds of Havona, one billion worlds in all. The current slide and the following slides show two artist conceptions of the central universe. We will get to know these worlds quite well as we progress inward toward paradise from the first and outermost ring of spheres to the seventh and final ring of Havona spheres, all the time progressing in all aspects of our being. The worlds of Havona have many other functions besides being training grounds for us ascenders. One of these other functions is as patterns that the Creator's sons used to design their local universes. They used both the physical patterns for the physical design and the Havona natives as patterns for the design of the creatures 
that will inhabit their local universes. This is very reminiscent of Plato's theory of forms, in which he proposes that there are perfect forms or ideas that exist, and that all material objects or realities are imperfect copies of these ideal forms. In our outward journey, we next encounter the two circuits of the dark bodies, a tricentric tubular one first, and a great wall of them next, facing out towards the circuit of the superuniverses. These circuits of dark bodies, as well as the seven circuits of the spheres of Havona, all counter-rotate, so that adjacent circuits always rotate in opposite directions. The authors tell us that these circuits of dark gravity bodies equalize any gravitational imbalance between the central universe and the rest of the master universe. What is most curious is that the authors tell us that these dark bodies prevent us from seeing the central universe. Yet the bodies neither reflect nor absorb light. The authors say they are non-reactive to light, which would lead me to conclude that they are transparent to light. But then how could they block the view of the central universe? And if these dark bodies block our view of the central universe, would we see a great black void when looking toward the central universe? Astronomers have discovered some huge voids in the observable universe Galaxies on the other side of the voids can be seen. I guess we'll have to wait and ask our teachers on the mansion worlds what happens to light to strike the dark gravity bodies. The Master Universe The entire universe is called the Master Universe by the authors of the Urantia book. The parts of the universe outside the central universe are described in detail in the Urantia book. These parts consist of seven inhabited super-universes and four as yet uninhabited outer space levels. All of these parts encircle the central universe. This is the end of the presentation.